Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and welcome to another Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique, where I take your best 10 images and give it a critique -y -critique -y Now, I've been putting out new critiques every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to check back here on YouTube, Facebook, and my website for those videos when they go live. If you want to submit your own files to be critiqued, go ahead and leave a link down below in the comments, or go over to the website and use the submit form to submit your stuff. So let's get into the critique right here. We've got Dan T. Zwig. Dan T. Zwig. That is Zwig. Z-W-E-I-G. So let's take a look at his, or her, it's his, best 10 images. Oh, snap. That face scared me right there. You scared me, young man. What's this shot with? We've got a Nikon uh, D5100, 18 to 105 kit lens. We've I've done great things with that kit lens. This is a little older camera at this point, but this was taken July 17, 2016, so fairly recent. Uh, first things first, what I think about the image is I like the details that are going on in the shot, but the processing is off. And I say the processing is off or the color, the processing is off or the exposure is off or both because it's too dark. Uh, it's, it's way too dark. You need to brighten this stuff up, use some of the shadows, use the exposure slider, and go ahead and do that. We were shot at f5, zoomed out to 58 millimeters, 1 500th of a second at 1250 ISO. So let's just look at this. If you want to stay at 1250 ISO, but you want to brighten this up, you have two options. You could drop the aperture, but in this case, it's variable aperture lens, so you're going to stay at f5, or you could slow down the shutter speed. This looks like it was taken a little later, so I would have slowed the shutter speed down by at least one stop to 1 250th of a second, which is going to let more light in. Other than that, I like what's going on. I think wider would actually be better for an image like this to tell a more rounded story. Exposure's off. Exposure's off again on this one. It's the same exposure, but it just, the exposure is off. I like what's going on in theory in the image. I like the person leaning on the bike looking at the crowd, but this is an opportunity to go wider, to get back up because you could take a portrait of somebody at the Eiffel Tower, but if you can't see the Eiffel Tower, it's like you should have just shot it in your basement, unless your basement so happens to be in the Eiffel Tower. Though there isn't a basement in the Eiffel Tower the last time I checked, though I've never been to France. From fr France. Well, I got french fries. Anyway, wider shot. Show more of the scene. Back up, go vertical and get the person in there with the whole bike. But you can see that there's a, a, a theme. There's something going on here. And I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see it wider. I want to see more details. Moving on. Obviously, the exposure is way off on this one. Plus, it's not a very interesting shot. I'm not sure why the exposure is so off. Um, something's going on here. You need to correct this in your images. Other, also, it's not that strong of an image because I can't tell what the hell is going on. And it, the exposure is primarily the, the problem. Now this exposure is my, much better. What is it being shot with? 55 to 300 millimeter, 4.5 to 5.6, cool little lens, kit lens. Um, 1 1,000th one of a second, ISO 100 at 5.6, and even at 5.6, you can see that the focus is so shallow and narrow, it's right there. But is it on the eye? I think it's pretty focused. So that's a pretty cool shot. I like the colors. I like the tones. Much better exposure than the ones prior. This is a cool image as well. But brighten it up a little. I, kn I know it's, it, it's later in the day. But I think sliding the slider over a little bit to get your exposure a little better would be, and there's no EXIF data here for whatever reason. Well, whatever this is. But nonetheless. I actually think brightening it up a little bit and going black and white will make it an even better image. And I don't dislike the color. I just think that, br that, that brightening it up a little bit will make it a, a better image. I like the composition. I like what's going on in the shot. Another thing that you could do, I like that you have the wide. Now we could move in and we can go a little tighter because you have, what lens were you using? Oh yeah, no EXIF data, Jared. Duh. And you can go and get a frame along this line and that could be your shot, right? Just keep an eye on something like that. Or you can go vertical and go a little tighter 
and you can get your frame to go a little like this, but I would rather put this much room so that aspect ratio isn't right, but that gives you more, more room. So what I like to do with my images, I'll get the wide shot, I'll move in a little bit with the zoom, and I'll zoom in again and get a little bit tighter, and I just run through the sequence just like that. So this is a nice moment captured. Again, why are we cutting off the person's feet? Go a little wider. What's cool about these shots so far is that the photographer isn't missing by that much. That's the point. They're not missing by that much. So though I am not liking everything about the images, I don't hate it. And I'm saying that the photographer is really close and hopefully this critique helps them see the world a little different and go a little wider and get that exposure a little more proper. I almost said writer. Get the exposure writer. I don't know if that's correct. Get the explo exposure a little more proper and just see the world a little different. You have the capability, you have the lenses from the, the 18 to 105 and the 55 to 300. You have the ability to get wide and to get tight, but some for some reason you're a little too far, you're filling the frame a little too much and not leaving enough information there in my mind to give more details. So we're gonna move back here. But I like the moment captured. One thing you could do is move off to the side and get more of the mother smiling. But even if it's a candid image, you gotta back up, show more of them, not so super tight. This is much better. Again, no EXIF data, doesn't matter. Exposure still off because you see how dark it is back here. In the processing, you can bring this back to life. You can use the slide, as long as you're shooting raw, and of course JPEG will do it a little bit, but you could get the highlights up. You could get the shadows going up, but there's a lot to play with in this, in this image. I'm sure I could take it in the Lightroom right now, and I would be able to brighten it up, move up the exposure to get it. I also think she's not very happy. She doesn't look to be very happy. Nobody looks to be happy here. I don't know why. So yes, it's a tighter shot. I still think not cutting their feet off and getting these people in here would be a better image. So, so remember this. Your images, part of the battle is shooting them and capturing them. The other part of the battle is how you process them. That's why one of the reasons I shoot raw is so that I have the ability to tweak the image the way that I see fit and not let the camera do it. But I think that photography can be won or lost in post-processing. On video, post -pro you know, editing in video is a major thing. You could save crappy video and make an awesome edit, whereas in photos, you can't really save a shitty photo and make it better by editing. But you could make a good photo crappy by doing poor editing. In this case, this image is much better than the way it's been edited. And I think you guys should may agree with that and, and see what I'm talking about here, but this image is better, and the processing is what's hurting it. And that's what I think that everybody needs to remember is that part of the battle is shooting the image. The other part is how you bring it to life in post-processing. Same thing used to happen in the darkroom when I was at school. Moving forward, beautiful shot. And also, I could say this, I don't know if maybe their screen is off. It's too dark or too bright or whatever, but this is a beautiful shot. No EXIF data here again, but I love what's going on in this area over here. This movement, it must have been a long exposure because this stuff's looking weird. Maybe we could have taken the image along the lines of this type of composition, right? That's about the proper aspect ratio uh, right there, 3-2. And that would be a cool shot because this stuff right here is more distracting. I don't hate it. I like this in comparison to all the other images. I think this is a strong process, the color looks good, everything along the, and the rolling hills and the fog, I just think that focusing a little tighter, in the, see, now we're wider, and I'm saying tighter would be better, but I also, I do, I do, I think tighter on the scale of something like this would make this a much stronger image looking inside this box, or even if we went up a little higher into the sky and made it more along these lines, it could be a stronger image, that's just playing around with composition. Moving forward, another cool shot. I think this is good. Um, do we have EXIF data yet? Nope, still no EXIF data. Though we're kind of lost here with the shadow. I would bring it up a little bit. I just think everything's totally underexposed with all of these images and it needs to be brought back a little bit. I think it could be their monitor could be off. 
Uh, I, I really do. Uh, but this is a cool shot as part of a photo story. A black and white, a little brighter, could probably lurk, work pretty well. Um, so this is much better. We're getting stronger as we move on. And this is the last one. It's fine. The color, the tone, the processing, better. Um, the moon over there, cool. Everything's nice and in focus, so they must have used a much larger aperture, like 22 or 16 or 11 or 8 or something along those lines. But this is a stronger image. So, like I said here, the photographer is close. Close, which is a great place to be. The composition is not far off, so what I would say is work on those things. Some of the images I thought need to be wider. Some of the images, like one of them, I thought actually would have been better tighter in a certain situation to get rid of all the distractions that were in there. So my recommendations, work on the processing, work on the composition, and I think you're on the right path to, to getting some awesome shots. So very nice job. If you would like to submit your images for a rapid fire critique, you can go ahead and click the link down below or leave it posted down below. Over on the website, there is a link to a spreadsheet. It's a Google document. You can put your information in there and I will do my best to get to as many as possible, but just know that I have already a couple thousand in the waiting and there's no rhyme or reason on how I pick them. I go through randomly, I click on them. If it looks like one that would be a great critique, I'll go ahead and critique it. And if you'd like to sign up for my Fronos photo email list and you haven't done so yet, look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. And that's it. Jared Poland, Fro, knows photo.com. See ya.